Hi, everybody. It's Jim Feist in Las Vegas. We're going to take a look at a couple games here tonight in Major League Baseball. San Diego at the Dodgers tonight. This is an interesting game. You got Richards going against Stripling. Now, on the surface, you got a hundred. You got a 175 favorite with the Dodgers, and you think, well, fade to complete. Dodgers are going to win this game. Not so much. You know, if you want to look for value in baseball, what to look for is underpriced favorites, which this is not, or an underdog that's getting too much coin. So we want to pick up coin. The whole method, purpose of this whole business is to make money. And you'll find that a lot of these big favorites, big teams, big pitchers, they don't pay off in the end. You don't win money because the prices are too high. On the other hand, if you look for those sleepers, let me tell you a little bit about this pitcher going for uh, San Diego tonight. This guy can show up. Last game, he goes up against Pittsburgh on the road. He pitches seven and a third, gives up seven hits and uh, two earned runs. He wins that game at Pittsburgh. That's a pretty good game. Pittsburgh's had a good year so far. Now let's look at another away game. He goes to uh, Arizona. He loses that game. He gives up. He goes five innings. Gives up three earned runs. Not too bad with the earned run issue. He goes to uh, Colorado. He does. He does pretty good there too. That's a big hitter's park. A lot of runs scored there. Five innings. It gives up four runs. He wins that game. You know. And then you look at this team. You look at this pitcher. He can get it done. Now, I'm not suggesting you bet Richards. What I'm trying to do is give you a little bit of insight as to how you look at a game. It's not always about that big team with that big pitcher. Stripling has been magnificent the last couple games. Six innings, one earned run. Five innings, two earned runs. Four innings, zero runs. Four innings, four earned runs. He's only gone out four times as a starter. The key here is he's not going very deep, which means you got to go to the bullpen. Now, you don't always know what you're going to get. It's kind of like Forrest Gump like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get. When you go to the bullpen, you don't know what you're going to get. So you're betting on a favorite here with a pitcher that looks pretty good, but he may not go beyond five or six innings. So now what do you do? You got three or four innings left and you got a bullpen. You don't know what's coming out of that bullpen. So my point here is when you look at games like this, you're looking for value. Let's look at another one. The Angels at the Yankees. The Yankees are 235 in this game. That's with Severino. This guy doesn't lose. He's been awesome. He's got a 2.35 ERA. He's he's nine and one record. Um, th this th it's amazing. He's won seven in a row when he goes out there. Now everybody says, "Well, let's you got to bet on this guy." It doesn't mean he's going to win the next seven in a row. Now he's going to go up against a guy named Andrew Heaney. Now he's two and three on the year, but Let's look at a couple of his outings. Last outing against Tampa Bay, six innings, no earned runs. Eight innings before that against Houston, a very strong hitting team in Houston. Eight innings, one earned run. That's right. Against Colorado, at Colorado, six innings, two earned runs. Before that, Baltimore, six innings, one earned run. This guy, if he got some backing, if he gets some hitting and gets some runs and support and defense, this guy can pick up a check for you. So you're looking at getting a big value with a team like this. This is the kind of thing I look for when I'm making Major League Baseball bets. So I'm going to do little tutorials like this. I'll pick on different issues. I'll look at games. But for me tonight, I'm not going to say I would. You know, I'd look at the Yankees and, and Angels maybe to go under the total. I'd probably look at the Dodgers and um, San Diego. Uh, you know, I'm not too sure about the total there because... If Richards comes up sloppy, the Dodgers could hit him, and they are hitting a little bit better. So I'm not too enamored with that. But uh, at least you got to take shots with some of these dogs. Or if you can get a low-priced favorite, like, for example, tonight, Tr Detroit. I'm not how you, how do you say this guy's name. Um, F-I-E-R-S, Fears, Michael Fears, perhaps. He's not that terrible. This guy can pitch... You know, I noticed well, most of his games go over the total. That's kind of interesting. Five innings, four earned runs. I look at that a lot. And then the ratio between strikeouts and bases on balls. And you have to look at the whip, which is, you know, walks, hits, innings pitched. That's a, that's a ratio, too. This guy, 
um, in this spot, they're a better team than the White Sox at this point. But Lopez, um, Lopez had a great outing the last time he went. He went against Texas. Eight innings, two hits, no earned runs, two bases on balls, eight strikeouts. Now, you can start repeating that kind of stuff. The last game before that, it was not too good, but then he went seven innings against Pittsburgh. <clears throat> Pretty good, too. That was a good outing. Two, two earned runs, six strikeouts. This guy has potential. Ronaldo Ren Lopez. Not so good so far. And a little bit better at home than on the road. But look out for this guy. He could be a... Ch not enough price here in this game. You're pretty much a pick him. Maybe a little bit of favorite on Detroit. I'd probably take a shot with Detroit, but I'd be wary of Lopez. I'm not going to bet that game. That's not a game I'm going to bet. When you look at this Cleveland-Houston game, eh, Cleveland's a little bit of a favorite. Kluber against uh, Keuchel. Kluber was awesome the last time he faced this team. Um, yep, he went up just... On the 19th, he was at Houston. Seven innings, six hits, two earned runs, ten strikeouts. They get the win, five to four. They won that game. That was at Houston. So now this is a comeback because he went against Keuchel in that game. So there's a spot there where I'd probably look for an under. I'd rather, yeah, I'd, it's it's a night game. I'd probably look for this to be an under play. Um, yeah. That's what I would probably do with that. So this is what I'm doing. I'm looking at some different things. Basketball, um, the NBA, we got Paul maybe out now for a game or two. He's got a hamstring. I've had hamstrings when I was an athlete, and they don't you don't recover too quickly from that. I know they'll shoot him up, and they'll put him, they might put him out on the floor, but I don't think he's going to be that effective. Um the problem with the Warriors, though, is turnovers. That key word right there, turnovers. They are turning the ball over more than they're getting assists. 18 turnovers in the last game. They didn't have that many assists. It's amazing. This is one of the biggest assist teams. They are not playing like the Warriors that we know and love, <laughs> if you love them. So anyway, that's what we're doing here. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, session, seven minutes. And uh, we'll be doing this each and every day. Thank you.